Just 20 years ago, when you went into a bank or you went into a business, you would meet a receptionist. You would talk to a human being and then talk to another human being. When you called the business or a business called you, it would be a human being. If you had to rent a movie, you'd go to a Blockbusters and interact with the human being. Now, 20 years later, the world is much different. Automation has taken the place of, of many jobs, especially in manufacturing. And with further advancements in technology, especially artificial intelligence, that trend will continue. Not many people are talking about this and the ramifications of the future. One of the few people who is, is a presidential candidate in the Democratic Party by the name of Andrew Yang. Here's what he had to say with Joe Rogan. And looking at the numbers, the five most common jobs in the United States right now are administrative and clerical work, retail and sales, food service and food prep, truck driving and transportation and manufacturing. Those five jobs comprise about half of all American jobs. Only 32% of Americans graduate from college. So the average American is a high school grad doing one of these five jobs. And if you look at it, technology is already doing a number on each of these jobs. Like the first administrative and clerical includes call center workers, and AI is in the process of uh, taking over that job. Retail and sales, 30% of malls are closing in the next four years. So the, the danger here is to think of it as artificial intelligence is coming. It's actually already eating up the most common jobs in our economy, and it's driving Americans uh, into distress in various ways in the numbers. Like right now, as we're sitting here together, the labor force participation rate in the United States is 63%, uh, which is the same levels as El Salvador and the Dominican Republic. That's right now. Like uh, 94 million or so Americans have left the workforce over the last number of years. Now, a lot of that's natural demographics. A lot of that's people in school. But about 5 million of it is unskilled men who've gotten pushed out of the workforce. The labor participation rate is the number of people employed compared to the number of people that are available to do work. This participation rate at its height in the year 2000 was 67.3%. After the dot-com bomb, the dot-bomb, it became 65.9% in 2004. After the financial collapse of 2007 and 2008, it was 62.3%. Now it's at 63.2%, so not even a percent higher than after the financial collapse. This number will continue to go down. Now, you might think, well, the high is 67%, now 63%, 4%. Well, that's not a big deal. That's not a big difference. But keep in mind that every percent, you're talking about approximately 2.5 million people. So Bain says you're looking at uh, between 20 and 30% of jobs subject to automation by 2030, which is pretty soon. It's like 11 wow. years from now. McKinsey says about 25%. Uh, the Obama White House, um, they said 83% of jobs that make less than $20 an hour will be subject to automation by 2030. MIT is saying the same thing. Uh, and so we have 11 years to try and accelerate meaningful solutions. And this 11 years, it's not like it all happens on 2030. It's going to happen between now and then progressively, according to all of the major institutions that have looked at this. So imagine in 2030, just 11 years from now, one out of four jobs being eliminated. Think about your neighborhood. Think about the homes. Think about one out of every four home of a major income provider being out of work. Uh, this is a huge issue and it's happening fast. The next clip is from an interview with Andrew Yang and Tucker Carlson on Fox News. Now, Tucker is uh, conservative-leaning, Republican-leaning, but thanks Yang profusely for bringing up this issue because it's such a major issue and nobody's talking about it. And during this discussion, Andrew's going to talk about three and a half million truck drivers and how their jobs are in danger because of new technology. So we told you a lot on this show about the potential dangers of big tech. Some of those dangers are imminent and they're technological. And the main one is robotics and artificial intelligence. Remarkably, the person, the political figure who is making the most sense on this subject, who has thought about it most deeply, is a Democrat 
who is running for president. He's Andrew Yang. He's an entrepreneur. And as we said, he's a Democratic presidential candidate. He says that artificial intelligence and expanded automation could potentially cause violence in this country and that we need to do something about it right now. Andrew Yang joins us tonight. Andrew, thanks very much for coming on. And I meant that with sincerity. I haven't heard anybody in our political conversation describe the threat as clearly and compellingly as you have. Why should we be worried about automation? Well, if you look at the backdrop, we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Missouri, and those communities have never recovered. Where if you look at the numbers, half of the workers left the workforce and never worked again, and then half of that group filed for disability. Now, what happened to the manufacturing workers is now going to happen to the truck drivers, retail workers, call centers, fast food workers, and on and on through the economy as we evolve and technology marginalizes the labor of more and more Americans. What will be the effects of that? Do you? I mean, that's, that's a massive displacement of people. What will happen once that happens? Well, as you said, uh, I think it's going to be disastrous, where if you look at truck drivers alone, being a trucker is the most common job in 29 states. There are three and a half million truck drivers in this country. Uh, and my friends in Silicon Valley are working on trucks that can drive themselves because that's where the money is, where we can save tens, even hundreds of billions of dollars by trying to automate that job. But I was just with truck drivers in Iowa last week and imagining that community recovering from their income going from, let's call it $50,000 a year to, to much, much less than that catastrophically, it's going to be a disaster for many, many American communities. You're one of the only people I've ever met who's honest about the effects of deindustrialization. I remember in Washington, the idea was they'll all become computer programmers, and so everything is fine, but that didn't happen. My question is, do we have to sit passively back and let this happen to the country? Well, that's why I'm running for president, Tucker, is I think it would be insane to just sit back and, and watch this automation wave overtake our communities and our economy. So we're not ostriches. We can get our heads up out of the sand and say, look, we get it. Artificial intelligence is real. Self-driving cars and trucks are being tested on the highways right now. And we need to evolve. We need to actually start pushing the way we think of economic progress to include how our families are doing, how our children are doing, uh, and things that would actually matter to the American people. Because GDP is going to leave, lead us off a cliff. You know, robot trucks, great for GDP, terrible for many, many American communities. So we need to get with the program and figure out how to actually make this economy work for people. I just, I, I sit with my jaw open, I agree with you so strongly. Let me ask you finally, why isn't this a central question in the campaign of everybody running for president on any side, and why instead are they talking about issues that really are kind of frivolous? Why aren't they talking about this? You know, it's a good question, Tucker. I mean, one of the reasons I'm running for president is to push this into the center of the mainstream agenda where every candidate should be talking about what we're going to do about the fact that we're automating away the most common jobs in the economy right now. As we're sitting here together, the labor force participation rate in the United States is 63.2 percent, the same level as Ecuador and Costa Rica. And if anyone thinks that's where America ought to be, I mean, that number is even going to be further challenged when all this technology comes online. So we have to make America embrace this challenge of the 21st century and then try and address it together as a people. Last question. Shouldn't people who cite unemployment statistics be penalized for saying something so stupid? Yeah, we, we have a, a series of bad numbers, and I referred to yes. the GDP as one. Uh, certainly, the headline unemployment rate is completely misleading. Yes. And one of my mandates as president is I'm going to update the numbers so they actually make sense to the yes. American people. Yes, yes. So we can know what's going on. Otherwise, we can't make wise decisions. Yeah, right now, again, and you know this, our life expectancy has declined for the yep. last three years, first time in 100 years because of a surge in suicides and drug overdoses. How can you say an economy is healthy when our people are dying? It makes no I, I sense literally couldn't. I don't even know what you think on the other issues, and I, and I just support what you said so much. I appreciate your coming on. Thank, Thank you. you, Tucker. It's great to be here. Thank you. So much of our self-worth comes from what we do for a living. When you get unemployed and you don't know when that next job is coming and, and you're looking and, and you can't find work and you're not providing for your family, you're not feeling like a productive member of society, that has a huge impact on the way you view your own value. And is it any wonder that drug use is going up, that suicide is going up. This is a major issue, like Tucker Carlson said, everybody should be talking about. An economy built on every household having two members who work full time is not sustainable. So what is the answer? Is it universal 
basic income? Is it putting a limit on the amount of automation to, to keep jobs? The change is coming, and the best way to deal with it is to manage it properly. Best way to deal with it is to manage it proactively, to manage it intelligently. Millions of lives are at stake. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time.